Many of you know I like to focus on companies that are extremely undervalued, and Mullen is a prime example. Now, I know it's very hard to compete in the EV space, especially against Tesla, but if you take a step back five or six years ago, Tesla was not cash positive, and you certainly weren't investing for face value. You were investing for what Elon Musk was ultimately going to do with the company, how he was going to grow it and improve it fundamentally and structurally. Look at what happened to the share price. Went from $3 to $1,200 a stock, which is insane. So I'm not saying Mullen is going to do the same exact thing or go to $1,000 a share, but I do think they have a legit business and they make a great product. When I look for companies to talk about, I want ones that are strikingly different. And I think that there's a serious growth potential here for Mullen. They're on the ground floor. They're at stage one. Okay, they're nowhere near a Tesla, but they have the potential to have real revenues, grow their business, and let's see some legit sales. But it's not going to happen overnight. Now, everyone wants to know, is this company a victim of illegal naked short selling? What's the short volume? And I'm seeing almost $7 billion on the short volume going back to mid-2020. Now, obviously, that is the total number, 6.9 billion shares. And you could see just how much short volume is just over the past, I believe, six to eight months, it shows um, in really comparison to what that overall percentage is at around 40, 43% of every share traded was short. That's not including wash sales, cross trading, things of that nature. Um, and what's even crazier is the squeeze number or where that, you know, real that dollar cost average on the short lies, which is at 50 cents. So that's really an awesome thing to know is over 50 is definitely going to be a positive for the company. Um, it's a it's a squeeze trigger, we like to call it, or where it would technically put it in red or underwater. So that's definitely something to focus on. I love what the company here is doing because they're taking a stance. This was yesterday. And they said a notice has been drafted by Dwayne A. Thomas, shareholder, representative, you know, of MULN, and basically says that, you know, they believe that Mullen has been a victim or targeted of the short practice here, you know, as an entity with the fiduciary responsibility to protect its interest of the invested shareholders. You know, that's what you want to see. It is a fiduciary responsibility. You know, it has to be for the CEO. You know, you have to fight back for your shareholders. You, you can't be complicit. You can't just be, you know, oblivious to what's going on. These are our markets. You have to take a stance here. And what I really like is that you see nearly 10,000 signatures recorded and traceable above on this petition. So that's what you want to see. This is how you take a stance. This is how you make a name for yourself. And this is really how you gain the trust of shareholders is by you come out and an executive, by the way, a CEO and executive should be doing this. Every single one should be doing this and saying, whatever it takes, we're going to educate ourselves. We're going to learn about these practices and we're going to fight back. I think that's very important. Then you can go to the West Christians, you know, the Warsaw Burstein, those law firms, Share Intel. Those are all great starts. Okay. So making a stance saying, hey, we know that we're being a victim here. We're not going to just, you know, act blind to it. That's what you want to see. Now, taking a look at some of the improvements structurally, okay, this is important because it's not just about how well the product is made or, or how it's designed, you know, it's how are you going to get sales, right? So they hired Donald Berthwick as VP of commercial sales, previously head of Western region for Ford commercial sales. Very impressive resume here. I'm, I'm actually surprised when I read this. Uh, responsible for $3.25 billion in annual sales to the Fortune 2000 Corps with annual sale deliveries of over 100K vehicles. Okay, he's going to lead the commercial EV sales out of Michigan. Okay, really stacked. 25 years leading commercial vehicle sales for Ford. Leading, keyword leading. Okay, that's awesome. And we see just a really nice lineup. I mean, this is awesome. This is really what you want to see. Okay, highly skilled and respected sales leader and will definitely play a key role. I think this says it best, you know, right there. Okay, great hire, great improvement fundamentally. We know that's hard to do. We know that's not easy to get the right guy to, to do the task needed to be done. But once you find it, and I think this is a perfect fit here. I hope I'm right about this. They hired another uh, government sales leader, Ronald Dixon. So it's not just about the commercial and retail side of it. You know, it's about also government sales. I mean, we see that this gentleman has 42 years of experience, 20 years leading GM's federal government fleet sales team, and will oversee Mullins commercial vehicles opportunity across all their programs. So that's really what we want to see is you're getting multiple ways of selling a car. 
Okay. I don't really see like Tesla, for example, doing like government vehicles or really doing, you know, big box trucks and, and more commercial side, even if they may be doing that, you know, behind the scenes, even if they're developing that, I really just don't see them uh, taking a huge stance there unless I'm incorrect about that, but please correct me if I'm wrong. So yeah, selling over 500,000 units, to the federal government over the course of his career, this guy seems like he knows what he's doing. This was not only like a month and a half, two months ago at most, where we saw two key hires from Mullen. That's really good. That's really a good sign of what you want to see if it comes to fundamentals and actually gaining more revenues. Next, we see they sign their first dealer partner, which is Randy Marion Automotive Group, as company prepares for their three commercial product launch. So this is awesome. You know, this is one of the largest and most respected commercial dealer groups in the U.S. They signed a deal here. Um, which is going to take a little stab at their commercial lineup. And then we see uh, John Swegman, I want to mention, uh, which is the chief commercial officer. So unless I'm incorrect, I believe that, you know, this guy also is responsible for that side of it. And we see, you know, a very accomplished career at GM, senior automotive executive, 35 years of success and experience across marketing, sales, product planning, uh, worked for Saturn, uh, served as marketing lean during GM's brand management period, uh, Chevy, GMC, VP of marketing for Buick and GMC. Both brands were the fastest growing OME brands in the industry. I mean, this is awesome. You know, seems like they got a real solid team here. And a lot of times that doesn't just happen overnight. So putting the right, you know, pieces of the puzzle together, you could definitely have something special come, you know, in these next 12, 24 months here. Now we see that Mullen is partnering with Loop Global to deploy EV charging solutions. And we see this here is the company. So Loop. And this is basically one of their products, the EV Flex. So one of their charging stations, you know, it's got Wi-Fi, LTE, all that, all that stuff on it. So um, pretty simple. Kind of gives me like the city bike type of deal here where you just pay on the app. You get to see, I guess, how much is being saved, how much you're paying. Yeah, very simple there. Next, Mullen receives their purchase order from Randy Marion for 6,000 of their Class 1 commercial vehicles. Again, same thing, December. A lot happening in December for this company. And we see over $200 million is the approximate uh, transaction value. So take a step back and say, this company is doing a lot. You know, I like to see this. This is awesome. Makes me really happy if I'm someone that's thinking about uh, potentially going long on this stock. Okay. So those are a few fundamental things I want you guys to focus on. You saw what I'm seeing. It's all the same thing. It's all in the press releases. Just go and take a stab at them. It's not hard. Go on Yahoo Finance, see who they're hiring, see who they're putting in positions, and then look at when they're hiring certain people. So president of commercial sales, and then we see government leader. And then we also see the, the gentleman before commercial sales, chief commercial officer. And then we go and see that they signed their first dealership. They got in with a Loop Global, which is a charging station. And then they received their, their first purchase order. So hiring the right people that are responsible for the commercial side of it, seeing then sales come, millions of dollars in revenue. This is a great sign for Mullen. So we talked about the fundamentals. Let's go and take a look at the technical. Looking at Mullen on the daily chart, it's without a question in a serious downtrend. It was beat down from 30 to 10, now all the way down to 18 cents, all-time company low, and closed just under 30 cents today. So overall, uh, we saw a slight break in this trend line here. We had a lot of resistance um, to this uh to the top of this trend line here. We broke out, now we're holding support above it, um, but it is continuing to come back down. So I don't see that there is a infinite amount of risk here. I don't see that it is very, very high risk. I think there's more upside than downside here. So this is where I like to take place, but I don't own any Mullen at the moment, okay? Um, I do think, again, when you start to zoom out, you get a better perspective as to where it's been. And my FIB levels are just off of this high that we saw back in March of 22, which I believe was $4.18. So that's just the first bracket or the first range within those levels from 18 cents to 418 is where I'm focused on. Okay. And again, if we zoom out, and really zoom out, you can see, you know, how high the share price was, you know, this was acting as support here. 
you know, these lines or these fibs that go across were acting as support at 260 at a dollar here and then pushed all the way back up, you know, to highs of over $20 after. Now it's just getting beat down. It's not even trading, you know, within these ranges. It's only in this bottom half. So under a dollar. So the first key level obviously is going to be looking for 75 cents, then a dollar, dollar 30, dollar 40. And I think, you know, we'll start to move for over a dollar 70. But there's a lot of upside potential here, I think is the point. This chart is not going to paint the picture well, besides the, the fact that it is extremely undervalued and it's beat down to nearly all time company highs. So the stock was 30, 40 dollars. And then even on a more conservative note, which I know a lot of people, you know, like that me, I'm, I'm more conservative, you know, look at how long it traded in this range. I mean, for a while, you know, this was like, I think 2018, 2019, all the way into the end of 21, you saw, you know, the share price be, you know, very close to on average, I would say around 10 bucks, you know, low of seven, high of 18, somewhere in between, you know, we'll just safe to call it eight to 10. So this was consolidating for a long period of time, you know, all the way from 20 to 19 or uh, 20 to the end of 21 here. And now this is just like in a ghost zone kind of. It's just, you know, not even responding here. So this is the time where I like to look at stocks when they're just so beat down, everyone's just done with them or, or they've gotten crushed. Um, I think there is opportunity here. But again, it's not going to be instantaneous. It's not going to be just today or tomorrow or, or in one night. You know, I think it takes a lot to fight back, it takes a lot of energy. The CEOs, the executive team, they have to be on the same page. They have to be a will and a want to fight and also doing it the correct way, not doing it the street way or following the street rules. You know, not the regular dividends, not the, you know, common stock splits or the preferred equity. You have to do it to where you can trap them and not play by their rules. No QSIBs, none of that. So that's my two cents on Mullen. Again, take a little perspective of where it's at, where it can be, and you know all the growth within that range there. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video on Mullen. If you don't mind, just share this link. It will really help get a little more engagement with others. But besides that, have a great night. We'll see you in the next one.